Now the other way that you can use DNA to, to break through an Irish brick wall is to uh, use clusters and triangulate on a specific uh, set of Irish uh, ancestors that you are having trouble with. And I spoke about this in one of my earlier presentations at length, so I'm just really going to run through it very quickly uh, now. Um, but the idea here is that you build clusters of shared matches and triangulate on a known distant ancestor. And some years ago what I noticed, and here I am down here, here's my father, and what I noticed was that himself and several of his uh, cousins all descended from Patrick Spearin and Mary Morgan. And I got to thinking, how can I use this to try and break through my uh, brick wall on my Spearin side of the family? I wasn't particularly interested in the Morgans at that point, but I was interested in the Spearins. And so I thought, well, any matches that any of these four people share in common, there's a good chance it came through either Patrick Spearin or Mary Morgan, because that's the common ancestor that these four people share in common with each other. And the DNA may have come from the Spearin side of the family, which is what I was interested in, or the Morgan side of the family. So let's call these four descendants A, B, C, D. I just simply compared A against B, A against C, A against D, B against C, B against D, C against D. So eight pairwise comparisons, and this is the number of shared matches uh, from each of those comparisons. And when I added them all up and removed all the duplicates, I had 100 uh, DNA matches that were shared by any, at least any two of the um, four descendants of Patrick Spearin and Mary Morgan. So this was the expanded cluster of shared matches, the four initial cousins who are known descendants of this brick wall ancestral couple. They formed the core cluster and their shared matches with each other formed the expanded cluster. And these will either connect to these shared matches on the Spearin side of the family or on the Morgan side of the family. And in my earlier presentation I talk a bit more about what happened next, but ultimately uh, I was able to get hold of somebody who had rare documents relating to the Spearin side of the family. They're not in any public um, not in any public repository, and uh, that's why they're a rare find. And there, up at the very top, you see Patrick Spearin and Mary Morgan. And uh, this it tells you that Patrick Spearin of Kappa, Ballingarry, County Limerick, I never knew where he came from, but now I have a particular location for him. Um, th this really was new information that I never had before. But it wasn't just um, about him. On the Morgan side of the family, I was able to get back an additional five generations. So it wasn't just pushing it back one generation, it pushed back an extra five generations. And it also alerted me to the fact that there were rumours that the Morgan family of Limerick were descended or related in some way to the Morgans of the House of Tredegar, which goes back to 1031 and even before that, um, and gave rise to five kings, six lords, and a duke. And if so, then I'm related to people like J.P. Morgan, and I'm related to people like Princess Diana, because she comes from the Morgans of Tredegar via an ancestor who lived in the late 1500s. So I was very keen to try to establish whether this was fact or fiction. And... Um, that really is where we come to how useful Y-DNA can be to get you past that 1750 time point. And the question I was using Y-DNA to address was, are the Morgans of Limerick related to the Morgans of Tredegar? And this is my family tree. Um, this is on my, this is my great, great, great grandmother, Mary Morgan, and these are all of the additional ancestors that I was able to um, locate as a result of getting a DNA match with the right person and having access to rare documents, which in turn put me in 
connected me with Burke's landed gentry and other documentation that supported um, uh, these particular ancestors to, for my great 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 grandmother. Now, the the question, of course, was how true is all of this, and can I use DNA to prove it? But the problem with autosomal DNA, as I've said before, is that it will take me back to about 1750. And it's not going to take me back much further than that. So there's a very distinct limit to uh, the use of autosomal DNA. Y DNA, on the other hand, will trace back along the father, father, father line and it take me all the way back to even the origin of the Morgan surname, say, 800, 1,000 years ago, whenever it was. So it would also help to, to establish, to a certain extent, whether some of these uh, uh, later Morgan lines were actually correct and not just fanciful um, speculation on the part of the person that put all of this together. And one of the reasons why I think there may be speculation going on is because this information is all included in Burke's Landed Gentry, uh, submitted by uh, Professor Henry Wardell, who was really obsessed with Morgan genealogy at the turn of the century. And in the 1925 version of Burke's, he says the family claims descent from the Plan Gatog branch. And on the 1937 uh, version, he says they claim descent from the Langston branch. So he's changing his, his opinion. And is this based on uh, specific evidence? And that raises the question, where did Wardell get his sources for this information? Uh, because it was he who submitted this, we believe, to Burke's landed gentry. Well, there were wills, there were land deeds, and there are possibly records in Wales that he had consulted. But the problem with checking these primary sources is that they've all gone up in smoke. In 1921, uh, June 1921, uh, during the start of the Irish Civil War, uh, one of the first casualties was 800 years of Irish history. And uh, included in the explosion that occurred in the Public Record Office were a lot of the wills and the land deeds that he had been studying. Thankfully, his transcripts survive and they have been restored to the National Archives of Ireland and uh, they are available for consultation uh, publicly. So my strategy for proving the connection between the Limerick Morgans and the Morgans of Tredegar was firstly to test the Limerick Morgans to establish their Y-DNA signature and then trace the, the, the family tree of the Morgans of Tredegar to identify direct male descendants, then approach these descendants for Y-DNA testing, compare them with the Limerick Morgan Y-DNA signature, and then uh, see if the uh, timed most recent common ancestor, the age estimates for when we were supposed to connect, whether that correlates with the genealogical data, and there you have it. Now, if there was a match between the Lim Limerick Morgan Y-DNA signature and the Tredegar Morgan Y-DNA signature, it would simply say that yes, there is a connection there, but it would not necessarily identify the most recent common ancestor between the two branches. But apart from that, it all seemed like a fairly easy approach. So I started off by testing two of my Morgan cousins who descended from my great-great-great-grandmother's father, Edward Morgan. And they came back an exact match to each other. Interestingly, there were no matches in the Morgan DNA project. They kind of formed their own specific genetic subgroup. And that kind of set alarm bells running. Um, next, what I was able to do was uh, they did match two other Morgans within the database um, with this same IM223 signature, and it did, the fact that they both matched meant that the Morgan Y-DNA signature had been passed down, unchanged, to each branch of the family living today since at least 1774. Now, these two other people that they matched, these ones here, they did not fit into this pedigree as far as we could see. 
So this suggested that they must have connected further up, maybe 1732, maybe 1680. So there was this suggestion that the Y-DNA had been passed down intact from an earlier ancestor than Edward Morgan in 1774. I went on to Ancestry and I did some research to try and find some family trees that had some of these names in them, and I found uh, several, and they were in Australia. And uh, we managed, over a period of two years, uh, to get one of these people tested. Uh, these are two uh, brothers, and he came back as an exact match to these well, or an exact or close match to these other ones, meaning that the Y DNA signature had been passed down unchanged, intact, uh, with only minor mutations here and there from 1655. And that was a very useful way of validating this Morgan genealogy back, uh, how many? One, two, three, four generations back from my great 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 grandmother. So this was the first benefit of doing this particular exercise. Now, I haven't been able to find any family trees that have these earlier ancestors in them um, that have a direct male line living descendant that I could test, but I'm still on the lookout. Uh, and if I do find uh, direct male line descendants from any of these people, and they also have this exact same Y-DNA signature, then this pushes our triangulation point just that little bit further back along the direct male line. But in order to establish um, whether or not the Limerick Morgan, uh, Limerick Morgans are, are related to the Morgans of Tredegar, all I would need to do is really just find out a direct male line living descendant from that uh, particular family living today just to see if there is a connection, um, get them Y-DNA tested, and hopefully they have the same Y-DNA signature. And that's when I started to hit a few problems along the way. And this was the first problem. The last Morgan of Tredegar was Sir Evan Frederick Morgan. And who would not want to have, as a relative, a man who attended garden parties with a blue macaw on his shoulder, much to the consternation of Great Uncle Alfred, and Great Aunt Maud, and uh, their sister Evangeline. Um, the other interesting thing about Sir Evan Frederick Morgan is that um, he was married twice, he didn't have any children, he was an avid occultist, and he spent a month every year living in the Vatican City where he advised the Pope. Like I say, who would not want to have him as a relative? Now, this is the, the direct male line of Evan Frederick Morgan. Can anybody spot the odd man out? Yes, it's here, it's Jane. Because even if we did get uh, Y DNA from male descendants of direct male line descendants of Evan Frederick Morgan, they would not have been carrying Morgan Y DNA because there was a DNA switch at this point in time. Jane Morgan, born in 1731, died in 1797. She was the last of the of the genetic Morgans, and um, she married Sir Charles Gould, who. Uh, agreed to change his name to Morgan so that the title, the baronetcy, and the land and the money could be passed on to their children. So these were Morgans by name, but their Y-DNA was Gould Y-DNA. So if I wanted to find the Y-DNA signature of the Morgans of Tredegar, I would have to find a descendant from further up in the tree. And it goes back to 1282 with Llewellyn ap Ifer who died in 1333. Well, we mentioned the Langston branch of the Morgans of Tredegar previously, and they connect at Morgan ap Llewellyn, but they went extinct in 1718 
with the death of Sir James Morgan. We also mentioned the Lan Clan Gatok branch of the Morgans of Tredegar, and they went extinct in 1767 with the demise of Sir John Morgan. Now, there are other branches of the Morgans of Tredegar, but they are less well known and less well documented, so I'm always on the lookout for more information about those lines in the hope that there may be a, an ancient direct male line of descent from that particular um, junior branch of the Morgans of Tredegar. So as far as this strategic plan is concerned, we have been able to establish the DNA signature of the Morgans of Limerick, and that has actually confirmed the accuracy of the genealogy back to 1655. So that's a good result. Um, we have kind of been able to trace the family tree of the Morgans of Tredegar, but a lot of the direct male lines have gone extinct. And we haven't been able to approach anyone for Y-DNA testing on the Tredegar line. Um, we haven't been able to compare the Limerick Morgan signature with the Tredegar Morgan signature, and we haven't been able to establish the age estimate for when the Limerick Morgans connect with the Morgans of Tredegar. So in fact, it is not so easy. Uh, but this is a useful example of how you can uh, put a plan into motion and be very logical and rational about your plan, and it gives you a good example of some of the hurdles and challenges that you may face along the way.